1965. CIA operatives are able to embed themselves within the Soviet Union's cosmonaut program with varying levels of success. Tip of the spear in that regard, one Ivan Neshbian, able to infiltrate the cosmonaut corps itself. For the last year, we've gathered crucial intel on several programs on all levels from the inside. Priceless insight on program planning, production, and execution. In order to remain under the radar, our agents are only able to feed us breadcrumbs. But the last few months, we've received an entire feast worth of intel. Anti-satellite weaponry. The kind of stuff that makes Alpha Decay Protocol look like child's play. What's worse, we have reason to believe Ivan may be compromised. A perfect storm coalescing under codename Komeda. We've readied our only flight-ready KX-20 with a specialized Kendar propulsion stage. This will allow us to rendezvous, observe, and return at a moment's notice. In June of 1966, one last breadcrumb finds its way through the Iron Curtain. Komeda has lifted off on the 10th. Its target? A Soviet satellite. Likely a test target. But as Ivan has gone completely dark, we have reason to suspect he is on board. Our teams on the ground remain on station 24-7. Five days pass without any word. Then, at 0125 hours in the dead of night, a low-frequency transponder whispers to life on encrypted U.S. frequencies. Morse code. S-O-S. -S. Word passes from the CIA straight to the top in a matter of minutes. The Foundation receives a call from the Secretary of Defense. Why would the Soviets go to such lengths investing in the demise of our intelligence gathering operations if they didn't have something to hide, something big? Bring him back to us, alive. Do not fail this country. And so the stage is set. Welcome back to For All Kerbal Kind, everyone. And what a way to get back into the swing of things. We have a CIA agent who is compromised, sent on a mission into orbit, and basically spaced, <laughs> shot at with a missile, <laughs> or some sort of kinetic rocket of some sort. And he so happened to survive. Some sort of handheld device that can't do anything more than beeps on really, really low energy frequencies. Um, can reach an SOS signal down to the United States to cue us in that, yeah, he's in need of rescue. Now the past, like, month or two, we've actually had a dinosaur on standby because we've been, like I said in the intro here, we've been getting little snippets of information that something is up and it might be something that we might want to check out or rendezvous, monitor, what have you. I had no idea until this actually happened that we would be performing a rescue operation for our CIA agent in orbit of the Earth. Now, this situation we were put in was very dire. Ivan had about seven hours of oxygen remaining at 1.25 in the morning on June 15th. And so we had to, we have to get up there before he runs out of oxygen. Now, the current place he was in the orbit, if you saw earlier when the president was talking to us, um, was in a terrible place. We had to actually waste four or five hours waiting for Ivan to get into position, and even then, we had to launch out of plane. The initial inclination difference was about 10 degrees at liftoff, and through Tokyo drifting into orbit, sort of going sideways, trying to alter our inclination as well as our time to apoapsis and time it with a rendezvous, we brought that down to four, and then we were able to get a close encounter, fix our inclination with a 500 meters per second burn with the Kentar stage, and basically ditch the stage, wait another orbit, and eventually rendezvous with Ivan here. And we've finally scooped him up. And my goodness, the suit is a little bit wrong. Um, but I was too busy flying this mission and focusing on that that I didn't even notice. And we're not even gonna use the jetpack. We're gonna let him grab on and come back home. And I can't breathe in. It all got started. Where are you taking me to distant stars? 
Will I wake up different than before? Is that why you want? Will you chisel all of me away? Is that who you are? Is that who you are? And we're on our way back down. Unfortunately, I miscalculated our re-entry burn just a little bit, and we ended up overshooting. I tried banking, but I didn't do it soon enough or correct enough. So we're ending up splashing down in the Gulf. But we brought Ivan Neshpian back from orbit. When we actually grabbed onto that ladder, all we had was, I think, 12 minutes of oxygen remaining. So that was definitely Definitely a close call. Splashing down here. Now it's up to the United States what they're going to do to retaliate. Well, we've shown the Soviets our hand. I believe the time is long overdue to show our fangs as well. Wouldn't you agree, Director? Let's show the world we're willing to play that game. I can only buy it my time. Gotta let the taste of blood You've been keeping me so numb Begging for another one We are Your restraints Morphing into what you made us I can feel your fear awake As you rush your rain contain us Descending from the clouds above Virginia, call sign Blue Flame returns to the runway where it launched from, having a satellite kill under its belt.
Yeah, I wanted the sword to keep it a secret, although I, I have a feeling as soon as some of you saw the missile, you guys might have been on to me about what retaliation really meant. We successfully shot down a Soviet satellite, Pagoda 1. Now this was a weather satellite that was launched in, I think, December of 1957, if my memory serves me correctly. And I have no idea if it was an active satellite or if it was already dead, but regardless, this mission has proven to the world, especially the Soviets, that their satellites aren't safe. In fact, we don't even need to develop a orbital launch vehicle to take one of your satellites out. So, you know, just a little retaliatory strike for you attacking one of our CIA members. As embarrassing as it is for us to have our spies discovered, well, how embarrassing is it to uh, discover that a CIA agent made it all the way through to your elite cosmonaut corps, hmm? I could go into the very specific details of the launch profile for this, however, as of right now, that is a l classified information because it's difficult and I don't want someone like, you know, a certain penguin to, uh, be able to do the same thing yet but uh i can i can definitely do a tutorial about how to shoot down satellites at some point when uh maybe the cold war is a little bit cooled down <laughs> that's gonna be all for this episode i am really curious to hear your guys's response to this um because i think it's just a lot of fun also i hope you guys liked the song i was working on that like all last week as well as other music the week before which is a part of the reason why the video was a little bit delayed, but hey, I threw it in the video. So technically, I was working on the video, but working on these. Um, regardless, I'm gonna stop rambling here and let you guys go. I just need to give a shout out to Chris Gebert, Darth Malakor, Elliot Ewing, Guy Called Odin, and Mr. Blue Star, and everyone else on the Patreon for your support. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a wonderful night, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.